Being a quarterback in the NFL, yeah, that's tough. You have to be able to throw a football and hit a target on the run 50 or 60 yards away. You have to make split-second decisions while 300-pound linemen are trying to bury your face in the turf. So it's no wonder that the quarterback position is one of the hardest jobs in pro sports. And as former pro Jeff Kemp explains, it's what prepared him for dealing with the trials of life. Football has always been a big part of the Kemp family. Jeff and his dad, Jack, were the first of six father-son quarterbacks in the NFL. Then in 1992, after 11 seasons and four teams, Jeff's career finally ended. In his book, Facing the Blitz, Jeff shares three things he's learned about bouncing up, not back, from life's challenges. And Jeff is literally just here. Hi, it's good hey, to hey, meet yeah. you. Good to see you. Good to meet you. you. Uh, welcome to the 700 Club. Thanks. Well, before we get into your amazing book, uh, let's talk about your dad, Jack. Sure. Uh, he was a Renaissance man, a football legend, of course, and then later ran uh, as vice presidential candidate. Um, always remember that the raspy voice. Did he always have that? He did. Yeah. Yeah. And I do. My wife, my wife has been praying that some of our boys would have it, but I think it's uh, probably <laughs> thicker in me than it is in them. Well, tell us, what are some of the things that your dad taught you that you learned from him? You know, one of them is a story that I share in the book that uh, my mom and dad were just trying to make it in the NFL, and he got cut, traded, bounced around for three years in the NFL and, and couldn't stick, and then finally found his job with the San Diego Chargers and uh, had a couple great years, but then he got sold for $100 to the Buffalo Bills. It looked like a blitz, yeah. a negative occurrence, something you didn't want to have happen. But uh, my mom and his mom both reminded him that God doesn't close doors without opening new ones and that he's in things, that we should go to Buffalo and see what happens. Wow. So he did, and it turned into a great chapter. He won two championships there, made great friends, uh, learned about the hard, uh, blue-collar, hard-working, blue-collar people of Buffalo, and then it led to running to Congress. So mm -hmm. that really was a blitz that turned into a blessing, and that's really the nature of this this book. Because he's really, for some folks, known more for his um, political uh, experience than his football experience. Well, know? really, he was, um, because he served in Congress for 18 years, and then as Secretary of the Housing and Urban Development, he cared a whole bunch about how do we bring free enterprise and capitalism and opportunity to those that are poor and that have felt left behind? How do we create ownership and dignity? So uh, my dad made you know a huge mark on the nation and a huge mark on me. He was my greatest encourager, because I really wasn't a star quarterback through most of my life. I was a backup in high school, yeah. and he was always that voice saying, hey, hang in your your day's going to come. Uh, you look great today. I said, Dad, I didn't even get in the game. He said, oh, I know. I saw you warming up. You're throwing well. Oh, man, that's awesome. Well, he, he passed away just a few years ago. Yep. But you all had a, a special moment right before he died. Tell us what happened. Well, he had uh, melanoma cancer, and for about four or five months, my mom and sisters and brother and, and I were able to be with him in a very intimate way. Mm. And uh, the last weekend I visited him from our home in Seattle out to D.C., um, I had asked him to pray for me. And laying on his to, bed, him to pray I for asked you. him to pray for me, kind of a blessing, like the Jewish fathers sure. would bless yeah. their children. And uh, I read Psalm 16 to him, and then he prayed for me, put his hand on me as I lay there on mm -hmm. his bed with him. Uh, and he prayed, God, help Jeff to remember his talent, help mm -hmm. him to remember the force for good he can be in this world, and help us both remember the only thing that matters is thy will be done. Mm. And right there, my dad blessed me in a way that I think all of us dads need to bless our sons and daughters, grandsons and daughters. He affirmed my identity. Yeah. He reminded me of my mission to make the world a better place, you know, to serve God, to be a, a leader who's a servant. And finally, that it's God's will that we want done, not our own small minded version of life. God's ways are much better. If more dads did that for their sons and daughters, I think we'd be living in a different world. We today. would. Yeah, we would. I mean, the, 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 the crisis of dads not being around. Uh, is probably at the root of our nation's trials. Yeah. Well, Jeff, you've written a great book called Facing the Blitz. For, for us non-sports junkies, what's <laughs> a blitz? You're not a sports junkie? Well, you know, I, I, um, I try to pretend. I thought the NFL is advertising and showing their game to everyone <laughs> these days. A blitz, a blitz is uh, when the defense is putting more than three or four big guys chasing the quarterback and attacking. They send a couple linebackers, maybe a free safety or a cornerback. So it's an all-out attack against the offense. Wow. Uh, and in that moment, it's, it's the most dangerous. But it's also the greatest opportunity because there's vulnerabilities in the defense and some of the greatest touchdowns are scored on the blitz, even if the quarterback ends up on his back. Uh, and I've had that happen to okay, me before. So blitz is an all-out attack. So how can it ever be a good thing? The all-out attack creates a vulnerability in the defense. 
and that allows you to run a play that gets through the defense or throw a long pass in life. Our problems are actually opportunities uh, to turn to God, to go back to our roots, to realize that he's in charge, to find out maybe that suffering, yeah. the thing that Jesus went through, to win our salvation. Well, you experienced this. You got blitzed. It's you actually got good for, I you, did. You got cut from the Philadelphia Eagles and you weren't expecting to. No, I wasn't. I, I, I had a good season in 91 and then in 92, I got cut from the team at the end of training camp. And uh, I went home to Seattle and I'm uh, waiting for, for the answer to my prayer at the time was, God, give me a new team. I want to sure. keep playing football. Yeah. Now that prayer to change your circumstances isn't always the best prayer. I think God wants to change us to handle our circumstances. So anyway, four weeks went by, no team signed me. I called the coach. I'm in town. I'm, you know, I'm ready to play because the Seahawks had an opening because their quarterback got hurt, and I lived in Seattle. And uh, the coach called back and said, sorry, we're not going to sign you. So oh, my, I was a strong Christian, but my emotions went in the tank. I went out to the front porch. I slammed the door. I sat out there and said, God, I'm not going to pray. I'm just going to feel this stinking pain. Mm. And I sat there having a pity party. Um, which was stupid because I'd been blessed with 11 years of football. I had a great wife and kids and so many blessings. But my wife came out, mm. which is a part of facing blitzes. We need a teammate. We sure. need to be transparent and vulnerable and ask for help. In this case, she offered her help and said, oh, Jeff, I can't imagine how much this hurts, but I know that God's got something good. Mm. He always has. Yeah. And I said, I know that. I just want to finish with some dignity. Well, and how did you turn that blitz into uh, a career for, I guess, for the last uh, 20 or so years, you've been working to strengthen families? Well, that, this story... Completes it because in the, in the worst moment of my career, losing my career, turned into something beautiful. She said, you know, Jesus didn't get any dignity when he left this world. Maybe you need to let go of that desire. Wow. And I joked and said, maybe you need to go inside. But pretty soon <laughs> I, I had this epiphany of Christ's love and his sacrifice, the blitz he went through for me. And then all of a sudden I started to worship and thank God. And I got this phrase, forget what lies behind, press on to what lies ahead. And I jumped into marriage and family and fatherhood ministry, which is what I've been doing for the last 25 years. And now you have four, two, two sons and two daughters-in-law. We have four sons and two daughters-in-law, and uh, my mission is to strengthen marriages Three and strategies strengthen people. for turning trials into triumphs. We didn't get to this, but you'll just have to get the book. Yeah, it's, go to, fam go to uh, facingtheblitz.com or your website. Facingtheblitz.com. It's available nationwide.